Welcome to the Gospel of Luke. We're in Luke 23, today verses 13 through 17. Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. No, neither did Herod, for I sent you back to him, and indeed nothing deserving of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for it was necessary for him to release one of them at the feast. So we're going to just take this portion. There's more coming. Pilate examines Jesus, asks him some questions, looks at the whole situation, and his evaluation is what? Well, when he's all done, his evaluation is, there's nothing to kill this guy about. And so here's this pagan, pagan Roman governor of all things, and he finds Jesus innocent. Now he's going to still chastise him, you know, just to satisfy their their displeasure, but which isn't isn't justice, is it? But that's what you have here. And so uh, that is going to be it. Just a little bit of a little bit of chastising, uh, some physical punishment there, and let him go. Well, they're not going to have this. We're going to see they're going to lose their mind here because they, they're they all in. This has got to be going all the way. So be that as it may, it's an interesting piece here to me that the Roman governor finds Jesus not worthy of anything to be killed for. Uh, here the religious leaders have brought him in. They've brought him in and they're ready to have him be taken out. But they are not finding the Roman governor to be cooperative in this. He is not convinced that there's anything here to address this way. He knows that this is beyond, up and above and over, and beyond anything that's right. And so he puts the brakes on right here. Very, very intriguing approach. You know, it's interesting when people are dogmatic and they've just determined that, that this can't go forward. We cannot proceed unless until this person is dead, until this person's removed out of the way. And that's what they've determined about Jesus. Jesus cannot be allowed to continue. It, the truth and error cannot intermix, and matter and antimatter cannot be in the same space. And so Jesus and his purity, his selflessness, and their prideful selfishness, we're going to be in control of everything and everybody, those things cannot coexist, and so Jesus has to go. But here we see Roman governor is not, not ready for that, not ready to take that line. And so we have to, again, look at the motivations of, of the religious leaders. What are they protecting? And today, what are religious leaders protecting? Sometimes they're protecting, you know, things of convenience. They don't want to raise a wave in the culture of some kind of antagonism. So everything it seems to go in the smooth, velvety pattern, and yet the truth is not that way. So we want to be careful to be always on the side of God's things and let him take it from there. Let's pray. Your Father in heaven, when things are moving in a very smooth fashion, we could recognize that that's not likely your work. I know in the book of Zechariah, when all the world's at rest and your people are in, in captivity, you are not happy. So as we look here at this, we see that they have put everything into taking Jesus out. And yet here we have the testimony of a pagan Roman governor. I see no fault in this man. Help us to never be trapped by the religious pieces and always to be looking to do what's right. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. So, friend, the Lord be with you all day long.